I'm Heidi. Hi, I'm Nell. We're one-to-one diet consultants. We are unintentionally matching. This was not planned. And this week... <laughs> <laughs> that time of year. Outcome I know. We're like, oh, it's a bit chilly. Uh, we are going to chat about setting goals, setting your expectations, how they might change, all of that stuff this week, can't we, Nell? Yes, goals and target setting. It's something that we talk a lot about. And it's something that I think that this time of year when we're staring down the barrel of, a, you know, the well, October, November, December, the last three months of the year, it's oftentimes where you'll see lots of charts and counters and challenges and all of those sorts of things going around. Um, and, you know, you do sometimes feel that, you you know, that is the expectation um, from our end, that you are expected to jump on board with one of those challenges um, and that, you know, weight loss is predictable and linear and all of those things. Well, I'm here to tell you that none of <laughs> We're here to say no. <laughs> I mean, I'll print you a chart if you like, you know, and some of them are very pretty. But the thing about goal setting and target setting is that sometimes they can be so smart that you can outsmart yourself a little yes. bit. Um, weight loss isn't linear. This is about as, you know, especially on our lower steps of the one to one diet, it's about as predictable as it gets. And if you stick to it, then it works. And I can, the better somebody sticks to it, the better predictions I can make. I've got, you know, we've got years and years worth of data as to so make predictions about how much somebody loses. But oftentimes, again, we will find people that approach us with how much can I lose? There is no guarantee, is the answer. Right. But that doesn't mean that setting intentions and coming at weight loss in phases with goals isn't a good thing. It's a really good thing. But sometimes, you know, we will come across people that will say, I treated it like, like a project, like a, like a work assignment where I had a spreadsheet. And if I didn't lose three pounds every single week, then something had gone wrong. And so we can kind of outsmart ourselves a little bit. So really, I think we just want to kind of redress that balance and come at it in a kind of more whole vantage point from you know from a more holistic point of view yes. and so there is more than one way of measuring success that it doesn't always meet up to a more ephemeral goal you know yes how you feel is is very different than a number on a scale and I think we all want to myself included and this is how I know want to turn up and get to the the binary 10 stone 10 or the, the 10 stone and and wear the black column dress you know even the boys we all want to get to that, that holy <laughs> we all want a body con dress and some heels let's face and it and by the time we get there everything will be you know everything yeah. will be everything will be sorted everything will be okay um but you know we're going to talk a little bit about how sometimes those things can evolve and they should evolve and how very personal they should be to you yes because if you're not careful those expectations that you set for your goals become something negative to beat yourself with rather than something aspirational that motivates you forward and wants you to make yes. you carry we on don't want to set a target that we are continually falling short of especially yes. if it's one that's come from us the expectation is that we are here to support you, not to, and yes, there is a level of accountability, but that accountability should never cross over into, hey, you said you were going to do this, why isn't it done? There is no deadline coming from our side of this relationship. Um, we are not a line manager. You know, there is not, there is not, that. that is not the level of transaction that's going on with your supportive consultant. Um, I'm here to give you the edge. I'm incredibly, uh, you know, with the, those standards and expectations of myself as your consultant Heidi and I want to do all the work that we can to make sure that we're giving you the very best advice and giving you that edge so that you yeah. can get those goals it's not that we don't think that it matters it's that it we have observed over time that it can really derail people if they set yes. themselves an outlandish uh, you know nothing wrong with being a bit ambitious and don't get me wrong we can we can rank do you know what I mean like we can get those results here that's partly why you know suddenly we're saying, oh, I only lost three pounds this week. Well, you're like, hang on a second. Out in the wild, that is an incredible result. And you'd be thrilled and you'd be getting, you know, star of the week. Yes. Again, don't even get me started on making weight loss competitive. And I also think that if I often say to, to my guys, if they're feeling a little bit down about a weight and it, I think it like, oh, my God, that's a blinking good result. I'll say to them, day one. If I told you that's what you would have right. lost this week, wouldn't you have been happy? And they'd be like, oh my God, I would have been amazed. One to one, we've wound yes, ourselves yes. up into such a tight little screwdriver. Yeah. And we're now saying, but it should have been more. It should have been five. And we it start comparing been... ourselves and we get kind of skewed in, in our expectations of ourselves. Yes. And it and it's, it, it's a tiny change in narrative every time. Yeah. It's a tiny little thing that happens sort of, you know, with imperceptibly without us noticing. Before we know it, five pounds isn't good enough. Um, yeah. And I, I love being targeted 
driven and I think it, you know, it really suits a lot of people to kind of set their, you know, they, they nail their colours to a mask and say, I'm going there. And a lot of consultants, you'll find they'll talk a lot about visualisation and, you know, uh, you know, the actualizing that comes from knowing what it feels like knowing what it's going to look like and i think that can you know, is really positive but again it's using the slightly more ephemeral you know um feelings rather yes. than um rather than a number and and that's the kind of evolution of i think you know having having expectations or goals that we set at the beginning but knowing that they can change knowing yeah. that they can change and evolve and whether that's kind of more Heidi you said earlier like you came in going I'm going to get to one weight but then you got to another and mm. you changed your goal yeah I was I was the absolute opposite I started at 18 stone I got to 14 and and that was it I'd, I'd won I'd got there I did it and then it evolved into oh but if I can do that then I'm more in control of this than I ever thought I could be and so I went even further and did that process again. So they can evolve and change. Whereas you were the opposite. You were like, nothing's going to work until I get to. Yeah, I was very like came into this. I was like, I'm going to lose like 10 stone. I'm going to be tiny. I'm going to live my best life. I'm going to get Kate Moss to run for a money. <laughs> like all of those things. And also I had in my head and I meet so many other women who have this number in their head and it's the magic 10 or just under 10 and it's yeah. somehow that 10 stone has got ingrained in our heads by like society diet culture the whole thing 1990s yeah the 90s happened that was a thing <laughs> um and um and it would just and then I got further down the track and I remember having a conversation with you um saying I need a chat with you as my consultant <laughs> rather than a colleague and saying you know I'm I'm really struggling here and you, the first thing you asked me was why are you trying to lose more weight? So and it was the first time someone said that. Say, and I'm sure I drive loads of you round the bend with it, but I will. And I will just do that irritating, reflective thing of saying, why? Yeah. And if you, can, if you can articulate to yourself why you are still here, why you are still doing this, and it's very flippant, you'll hear it all the time. Know your why. Know your why, but know it. I mean, yeah. know it inside out, because if you can then like Heidi did go, um, um, because I think I should. Because yeah, I, think that's I had to have a it. really good think about it. And it because came to the conclusion you think I should, because yeah. society thinks I should. I don't, it's a very good. Why? Why am I doing? Yeah, I had to re revisit my goals because whilst I'd become a little bit consumed by the number of the scale, which happens to a lot of us, my original goals were. I feel terrible. My health is suffering. I just want to feel good in myself. I want to have energy. I want to be able to do the things I want to do. I want to wear the things I want to wear. I want to feel good. I want to feel confident. I want to get my self-confidence back. None of those were about a number on the scale. And I had to really reassess, okay, so if I've achieved all that and I'm really happy here, what? why am I getting so hung up? And, and I came to the conclusion that actually that for the moment, that is exactly where I wanted to maintain and enjoy and find the enjoyment in, in getting my health back and feeling good in my body and celebrating all of that. It's very, very common that a lot of us don't think the benefits kick in until we get to or very close to our goal weight. The or we refuse there, to admit that we've had well, any benefits. <laughs> well, and then that is over target, being overly target driven well it, it can cause people to be really dismissive of any of the benefits that happen from complete nutrition and good hydration you know and and talking to yourself a bit more nicely and, and sleeping a bit better and you know that all the ripple effects that happen when we are taking good care of ourselves um that those things don't happen until you know they are the reward for getting to a certain weight actually they happen on the back side of week two you know, yes. when you've kind of expunged, you know, the sugar and got the blood sugar stabilized and got your water up, you start feeling so much better. Then the flip, then the other thing happens where people are like, well, it's job done now. And then you're like, <laughs> no, my love, I love it. Actually, you've lost four, four pounds. And, and I'm glad you're feeling so much better, but we're in this for the, you know, we're in this for a bit, for a bit longer. We're going to make sure that this, you know, that these benefits really bed in. But that space if it's somewhere between four pounds and, and goal, 
that's going to be different for everybody and it's going yes. to be different than you than it was for us uh, you know and and knowing that why and having that relationship where you can reflect with somebody and really you know know why you're doing it what the benefits are and recognize them at every single stage is um is really i suppose the message today but don't be too hard on yourselves about knowing that number it's not tattooed on your head no. nobody else knows what it is and it will fluctuate i hate to break this to you even when you're at goal you know there will always be a little bit of flex in that number nobody ever stands on the scales for the rest of their life and just sees that one number that one round number that we're all that we're you know we we kind of think that we might there's always going to be a bit of bloat and christmas happens every year and you know people go on holiday and life gets in the way and there's always and we happen to be human and humans aren't perfect and if you try to expect perfection of yourself you're always going to fail and then you're always going to beat yourself with that and it's never going and, and to get into be, a good place. And that will be the undoing of us. So yeah. talk to your consultant, agree on things. And then, you know, the better your consultant knows you, the better they're going to be able to help you to, to stay accountable to that. You know, some people really don't like being reminded that they said such and such or that they wanted to do such and such. And that that can be quite, you know, that can, that can do relations no good at all. So agree on the kind of level of accountability that you want. You know, a lot of people want to be, no, I said I was going to get to here and, you know, you, you know, you doing me a favor by reminding me that I said I wanted to do that other times it's more well I've been thinking and it's this and this wonderful thing happened and I'm feeling happy in my clothes and it's starting to feel like a grind that I have to lose more weight I've been thinking about it and I don't you know I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn to drive this exactly like Heidi yeah. just said I'm gonna figure out how to do this bit I will come back round. Never say yes. never. Evolve, you know, allow yourself the room to reassess those things periodically. And in between those periods of reassessment, put your blinkers on and stay on plan. Yeah. You know, it's not like you have to every single day of every single week, you know, it's just, you know, in phases, no way, always know where you're where you're heading next. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's the quality of life piece. Yes, there's a number in the scale and we're using it to measure ourselves against to measure progress, really. We're not measuring ourselves, we're measuring progress and whether the plan is working for us over a course of weeks, not just the seven days in which you've stepped on the scale. I think that's another thing to really bear in mind that weight loss doesn't go like this. It goes a bit more like that on the way yeah, down. Yeah, I know that was a bit vague periodically. But yeah. yeah, like you say, not not every not every single week, you know. Because seven but days is a really short amount of time in the scheme of things. Yeah, if you can look at it over four up, to six weeks. Get up weeks. mini goals and smash them down and set them up and smash them down. Um, but sometimes we just get, we can micromanage, you know, because of that week by week thing, we yeah. micro, we, we, we micro assess these things as in was it a good day a bad day was it a good week a bad week and actually just sort of you know pulling back a little bit and looking at the broader goals and aims and and why are we here and why are we still doing this um and if if what they do is you know they they reaffirm our commitment to ourselves that's what we're looking for yes you know, ultimately your why is you it's an yeah. important project. Project U is the best project you will ever work on. It's not selfish. It's absolutely 110% necessary. And you are doing the right, you know, you're doing the right thing. But know when you're happy. Know what that, yeah. allow yourself to know what that's going to feel like. Because, you know, I never find anybody more happy for you than me and Heidi. <laughs> exactly. You know, and we're not just doing it for a number on the scale. Usually most of us have a whole host of reasons and they are much more <clears throat> softer than just the number on the scale. They are how we feel, the things we can do with our families, the kind of lifestyle we want to lead, maintaining our health, feeling good about ourselves um, and going forward to having a life that we enjoy and we look forward to where weight loss isn't a deciding factor on whether we get to do something. Learning things. the skills that it takes to continue to show up for yourself. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. you know, losing Put weight in one first. phase, keeping it off, and continuing to show up for yourself day in, day out, and making the decisions that are, you know, it, it, to your benefit so that you can live that life in which you can thrive. Yes. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, that's, that's not a number on a scale. No. And uh, the good news is, even after you've reached your target and you're in maintenance, you can still get support from us. That's still included. You can still get support. Yeah, it's from the your way we always say that, like it's a promise. And I always, it, when you hear it out loud, it sounds like a threat. You're like, it does a little when you're bit. There, I when you're there, I know where you live. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will come and find you and I will make sure that you're still good. We mean it as a. 
<laughs> we mean it in a much support. more lovely, kind yeah. way. We wean you off the products and then we wean you off us and our support last. Yes. Um, and we're always here for you should you should you need some support in your journey, whatever stage you happen to be at. Um, and, you know, this is an evolving journey. Like Nell says, you might want to take a pause for some time. You might want to decide to rest where you are and drive the where the situation you're in. And that's where I found myself I was like, I want to learn to drive this body and never see how I never. feel. You know, we are used to it. it you know, it, it, it comes in phases and we yeah. will support you through all of those phases. Exactly. So. Thank you for joining us again this week. We hope you found this video useful. If you would like to contact either me or Nell about becoming your consultant, the contact details are in the description box below. Please like and subscribe. We put a video out every Tuesday and we will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. I love I it. Know. You're I so good where the end is. Where's the stop there? <laughs>